Now, I'm told by those to, with whom I've discussed this that negotiations are being held up because those who would be at, participate in them are seeking conditions. But what conditions? The conditions are that the appalling repression that is taking place at Ashraf at present should be lifted. That is a perfectly reasonable condition. How can you possibly negotiate a solution to this under the kind of duress which is now being suffered by the vulnerable? So I would like to, if I may, Madame Rajavi, Mr. President, sketch out what I think might be a possible way forward. The first is that there cannot be any compulsory resettlement. There cannot be a compulsory resettlement. Those who argue that this would lead to circumstances that could produce a greater and further tragedy, I think, are right. There can be no compulsory resettlement. The second is that before there are any negotiations, the appalling repressions exercised on the people living in Ashraf have to be lifted. There have to be visitors able to go there. There has to be an ability for doctors to get through to the wounded. There has to be an ability for people to be, uh, to be buried with due dignity. And the third is that there shall be, and there should be, international observers in the camp. Absent of those conditions, I cannot see how sensible negotiations could take place. Now, I would hope that the United Nations would provide observers in this camp. They certainly should. But I'm informed that the United Nations will not go there because it is too dangerous. The United Nations will not go there because it is too dangerous. I thought the United Nations' job was to protect people against danger, not itself to protect itself against danger. And I find it simply impossible why, if there are international observers to be there, it should not be the United Nations. But all right, if they will not do it, then let us look elsewhere. Maybe European Union observer mission while these things take place, while these negotiations take place. We have to end the intimidation. We have to end the repression, after which I think a sensible solution could be found. Above all, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I, I hope that now we will picture in our mind's eye the condition of these people, the appalling conditions in which they live. Time presses. We cannot leave this waiting. We now have to resolve this issue sooner. Thank you.